Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday, our Wednesday night service. Glad you could come out tonight. And uh, those of you online, we thank you for, for uh, clicking on. Uh, let's stand and we'll pray for the Lord to come into our service and our songs. And Lord, we just thank you tonight, Father, for another opportunity to worship you. Father, for your Holy Spirit to move in this place. Lord, we didn't come just to sing three songs and, and move on. Father, Lord, we want to worship you, Father, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Father, Lord, we want to be empowered by you. We want to feel your glory, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you so much tonight, Lord, and bless this service in Jesus' name for your glory. Amen. Praise God. I've got peace like a river. Have you got peace? I've got peace like a river, peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Oh, I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Oh, I've got love like an ocean, love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Oh, I've got love like an ocean, love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peace and joy and love. Amen. Thank you, Father. Have you got a mountain in your way? We know what we got to do. Let's turn it over to the, it says, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. I picked these songs out two weeks ago, so praise God. Is there a mountain in your way? Do doubts and fears abound? Press on, oh, hear the Spirit say, This mountain shall come down. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. By my Spirit, saith the Lord. Is there a river in your path, a river deep and wide? Step in, the waters will roll back, you'll reach the other side. Not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by my, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed by my spirit, saith the Lord. Is there a fiery furnace trial for more than you can bear? Behold the blessed Son 
of God is walking with you there, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, by thy spirit, saith the Lord. Then trust along the mighty God. He speaks, the winds obey. Take courage, then no fainting heart. For you, he'll make a way. Not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed, by thy spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. By thy spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you're in control. Hallelujah. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain where I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life oh he is my song and let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song and let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song for you are good good oh you are good good oh you are good Oh, oh, you are good, good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you are good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Oh, 
Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. One more time. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise. Lord, let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, there's no other name, there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for loving us before we ever knew you. Thank you, Lord, for going to the cross, Lord, taking the penalty for our sin, Lord, giving your life for us, Lord, before we ever knew you god thank you jesus and lord thank you lord as that good shepherd you went after us lord you sought after us god we didn't find you you found us thank you thank you jesus god we love you we bless you we worship you thank you for your love your goodness your kindness your faithfulness thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord jesus thank you for the new covenant Lord, that you instituted in your blood. It's so much better than the old. Thank you, Lord, that every one of us, Lord, we're, we're your children and we can come confidently, boldly before your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, you've made us a kingdom and priest, Lord, to serve our God forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, you did that with your blood, Lord. You paid for us, Lord, with your blood. You adopted us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, strengthen your people tonight, God. Lord, give your people grace. Lord, we can all hold our head high because Jesus, because of what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen and bless, encourage your people tonight. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee is going to bow, every tongue confess. Jesus, the devil trembles, Lord. Every demon trembles at your name. Jesus, you are Lord. Thank you, Father, as your word says, who gives us the victory in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you that we have victory tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you know Jesus, you have victory. You are victorious. Hallelujah. 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 The Christian faith isn't a self-help faith. <laughs> it's not a self-help religion. It's a, it's, God loves you and he'll help you. <laughs> Religion, it's Jesus, it's faith in him. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. And I encourage you, if you're, whether uh, in person or online, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. He loves you. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a, uh, a, a thank you uh, from Emma, uh, the young uh, gal that uh, painted in the... Uh, in our, our new Sela Coffee House. We need to christen that, don't we? With, with some Java, <laughs> some fancy cups of coffee, and don't, we're not gonna, we're not gonna break it on the wall, though, <laughs> like a ship. <laughs> but she writes this, Dear Lighthouse Assembly of God, thank you so much for providing me with the opportunity to earn money for my Italy mission trip. It was really fun painting the walls, and I hope you like it. 
I will be gone for the trip June 6th through the 16th. Prayers would be much appreciated, especially for God to work in the hearts of the Italians and start a movement for Jesus there. Thank you again. Amahato. Praise the Lord. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, Praise was... God. That is awesome. Woohoo! Praise. Well, let's rejoice. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says all the angels in heaven rejoice when one person turns to the Lord. So anyway, we're going to pray for uh, Emma and, uh, and the team over in Italy. Praise God. God isn't done with Europe. You know, he's not. Uh, good things are happening. Good things are happening. And uh, we're going to uh, pray for Kay tonight. And uh, there's, um, there's a spot on her back, and the, the doctors are wanting to do a biopsy, but because of some medicine she's taken, they can't. So she's kind of in a catch-22. But uh, we're going we're gonna to anoint you with oil, lay hands on you, praise the Lord, and uh, believe God will just uh, get rid of that spot. Amen? <laughs> praise the Lord. And... Uh, well, those are the those are the, the the two prayer needs. Why don't we uh, why don't we gather around Kay, and you just stay where you're at, and I'll get the anointing oil. Amen. Amen. If you're watching online and this is new to you, we just follow the book. The Bible says, "Is there any sick among you? Let them uh, uh, call for the elders of the church, and anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith will raise them up." And Jesus sent out his disciples, and the anointed anointed people with oil and prayed for them, so we just follow suit. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Get some oil. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, Robert, lead in prayer over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Completely, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you said where two or more agree on catching any one thing, it will be done. So, Lord, as your church, God, we've agreed in prayer. Lord, and we thank you for your healing power and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love for Kay. And, Lord, that you already picked up her infirmities and carried her sorrows. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Maybe I should have gave opportunity for others who wanted to be anointed with oil. Let's, uh, let's lift up Jennifer uh, before the Lord. And uh, God, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for our sister. We thank you, Lord, that, that her life is safe in your hands. And, and Lord, we pray against the spirit of fear, God. We pray against anxiety. Lord, we bind that thing, Lord, Jesus, in your name. And God, we pray that you'll flood her with, with faith and peace. And Lord, that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, that you would move and touch her and rid her completely of cancer. Lord, that that spot would be removed, Jesus, by, by your name, by your grace. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. It is done. By your stripes we have been healed. Lord, it's past tense. So we thank you for that, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And God, we lift up Emma before you. And God, thank you for this, this uh, young lady, Lord, uh, just so mature for her age and, and a heart for you. We pray, God, for her and the team that went to Italy. God, uh, thank you that already, Jesus, you saved, you saved a person through their work. And uh, Lord, we pray your blessing. God, we pray your angels to surround them, keep them safe in every way. Lord, we pray that, that Lord, that they would be in step with the Holy Spirit and all that is planned. God, that you would move and, and do a work of grace. Lord, continue to save souls. And, 
And uh, Lord, as Emma wrote, God, just, uh, Lord, just begin, Lord, a revival there, Lord. Just light a fire in Italy. God, we pray for that, Lord. Build your kingdom. Build your kingdom. And Lord, we pray for our, our country, Lord. God, thank you for America. Thank you for your faithfulness over the years. And Lord, I just thank you, God. You are moving. You have good plans. Lord, I don't believe you're done with America yet. And God, the fires that have started, Lord, uh, spiritually, Lord, throughout the country, God, we pray, fan it, Holy Spirit, into a flame. Lord, you're into not addition, but multiplication. And God, we pray for that, Lord. God, uh, we pray that, Lord, all that you want to do in Metropolis, Lord, that we would have faith to believe you for that. Lord, that we would be obedient and walk and step with you. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the uh, children's, uh, uh, the Christian uh, summer camp, Lord, that's uh, uh, going on right now, God. We thank you for Rosemary and and, uh, and Harvey and, and the group of people you brought together. We pray blessing and anointing your presence. God, your touch upon the kids, Lord, the parents, Lord God, that you would draw them to yourself and bless them. And this would be an unforgettable uh, moment in their life, God, of not only having fun, not only, Lord, being around good role models, but, Lord, an encounter with you, God, that will change their lives. God, we pray a hedge of protection from the evil one. And, Lord, build your kingdom. God, thank you for, for all, that, uh, all those who have been working here in the congregation, Lord, to get things prepared in the Christian Life Center. God, we pray blessing, God, and, and Lord, your help and your grace. God, uh, may it not feel like a mountain in our way, but Lord, by your spirit, help us, Lord, to get the Zacchaeus' uh, treehouse set finished and everything all together. And God, we commit it into your hands. Lord, for the outreach that's going to be uh, uh, coming up with Revolution Youth Group coming, Lord, we pray that you'll prepare the way. Everything would come together. You're anointing, you're blessing, God. We need you. And uh, God, we thank you for that. Lord, thank you, God. There's always hope in you. Jesus, you are on the throne. You are Lord, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can you say, Jesus is Lord? <laughs> Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Lord, we come before you. Thank you tonight, Father, for an opportunity to give to you, Lord. We just worship you and thank you for Lighthouse, Lord, and all that you're doing, Lord, and your blessings on this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Oh, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Amen. Thank you, Beverly and Jay. dynamic duo of Wednesday night. <laughs> the, see the golden the golden voice and the <laughs> the angelic hands <laughs> on the keys. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Some of those old radio shows, they were very good with their uh, words. Amen. Well, tonight's uh, message is be encouraged the lord is near amen praise the lord and uh it's um my message is actually taken from acts chapter 21 through chapter 28 and i'm going to read every one of them <laughs> oh praise the lord well, let's pray god thank you for your word thank you thank you lord that you are the author of the book and Lord, you put every word in there, Holy Spirit, that we needed to hear and uh, the examples from people's lives. Lord, when we read your book, Lord, these people really lived. Lord, they were here on the earth, God. They had, they had families, friends, 
Lord, they grew up, they, they lived, they worked, God, they, Lord, went home to be with you, God, they're real people, and uh, Lord, we can learn from them, and God, I pray that, Lord, that you would encourage each and every heart, L Holy Spirit, we look to you for your anointing, and uh, may I be clear in my teaching, and may we receive tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, <clears throat> Paul had gone to Jerusalem, and people had assumed things about him that weren't true. And uh, this is Acts chapter 21, verse uh, 27. The Bible says, When the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw him, talking about Paul, in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help! This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people, our law, and this place. What's more, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, in the city with him, uh, and they supposed or assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. How many have ever had people assume things about you? <laughs> yeah, how, do you, how did you like that? Or how do you like it when people assume things? You know, there's uh, one time I was in a gas station and uh, uh, I was a teenager and I forgot what brought on this conversation, but the lady behind the counter, she explained to me what uh, uh, the saying behind assume. And I can't mention it from the pulpit, but it stayed with me all my life and it's true. <laughs> and so it's a good saying to remember. And, uh, and so, uh, but these, uh, those same people who uh, assumed things about Paul, then they stirred up a big commotion uh, and, and they, uh, they got others to join in and they started beating him with the intent to kill him. And uh, hopefully uh, none of us have had that happen to us, right? We may have been assumed about, but we weren't beaten with people uh, trying to kill us. And, uh, but you know, it did, however, result in Paul having the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. And so that was a praise the Lord. And um, so though Paul didn't start the commotion, he was arrested. Now, doesn't that seem to be the case in, uh, more and more in our country today? You don't start the issue, but then you get arrested for being innocent. And uh, God help us. <laughs> you know, God has put... Um, and, and I believe, uh, you know, Safanda, you teaching kids and those of us, you know, um, had, anyway, we were all kids once, but inside of each and every child is a sense of justice, isn't there? There's, because we're created in God's image. And, and, uh, and so there's a sense of, of justice. And, uh, and even, even when kids don't want to get spanked, when they know they did something, they did something mom or dad told them not to, they know they're justly being spanked. And uh, so uh, Paul, though, he didn't, he didn't start the commotion. He didn't do anything wrong. He was doing everything in accordance with the Jewish law. But actually, the Romans, they took charge of him and they, the Romans probably weren't really so concerned about justice. What their concern was, was about keeping order in Jerusalem. Because that was most likely the case, because if, uh, if Jerusalem were to riot, they themselves would find themselves in trouble. In fact, that's why uh, uh, Pilate, at, at Jesus' trial, he was concerned about a riot happening. And so that's why he said, well, I'm just going to wash my hands of this and let them have their way. So Paul was under arrest, which was really keeping him safe. But, you know, he wasn't sure what was going to happen to him. And uh, how many know the unknown is usually the scariest, isn't it? It's, it's the unknown. Um, it's not a fun place to be. And, uh, you know, we can think, well, yes, Jesus loves me, but how is this going to turn out? You know, how much pain, how much grief, uh, you know, how much is this going to cost me? But, you know, we need to grow in faith to trust him, even when the possibility 
is grim, right? We need to trust the Lord that it, Jesus is with me. It's going to be okay. And you know, the Bible says this. Oh, let's see. I guess I, uh, let me just go ahead. As they were trying to kill him, okay, well, I already told you about that, chaos. <laughs> okay, the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, Paul, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Praise the Lord. You know, God didn't send an angel to appear to Paul to encourage his servant, but he himself came and he appeared to Paul. And... Note, the Bible says that the Lord stood near Paul. He wasn't across the room. Hey, Paul, it's going to be okay, right? <laughs> I'll use my wife as an example. He was, he was close to Paul. You know, he may even have touched him and said, said Paul, it's going to be okay. You know, and so the Lord, the Lord was near, the Lord was near Paul, and he called him by his name. Now, this might seem, uh, you know, silly to you, but it's not to me. It was always sweet and special uh, when my mom told me she loved me. She just didn't say, I love you. Um, but, but what she would say, and it was how she said it, she, she would always say, I love you, Brett. Even if we were on the phone, you know, even if um, we were the only two people in a room, she would, she would look at me and just with love say, I love you, Brett. And it's just something about saying my name, you know, along, along with that. And, and, I, and I do that with my kids. And it just makes it extra special. And when, when Jesus fall, uh, shows up, he says, take courage, Paul. He calls him by name. He comes near to him and says, Paul, take courage. Take courage. And uh, he says, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify uh, about me in, in Rome. And so, Paul, it's going to be okay. You don't know how it's all going to turn out, but it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this uh, difficult time. But how many know that, realize that God knows your name? He knows your name. And that uh, you are dear to him. The Bible says that even if a mother were to forget her child, I'll never forget you. The Lord says that through the prophet Isaiah. And uh, you, are, you are dear to Jesus, you are precious to him, you are loved, you're loved by the Lord. And so Paul was in a very difficult situation, he'd been slandered, uh, wrongly arrested, and just imagine, his body had to been hurting, his head throbbing, he's got bruises on him, probably hard to sit, lay down, move. I'm sure they were kicking him in the ribs and beating on his head with their fists. And I mean, he was hurting. And the Lord, however, is looking upon Paul with love and pays him a personal visit to, uh, uh, to encourage him. Saint, you need to know you are not forgotten. You are never forgotten by the Lord. You may be hurting emotionally, you may be hurting physically, but the Lord hasn't forgotten you. He is near you, and he has encouragement for you too. He's got encouragement for you. And so, you know, the Bible says that, let's see, we'll stay on this verse, the following night. Well, why didn't the Lord come that night? Why was it the following night? Okay, the following night, the Lord stood near Paul. You know, sometimes we just need to get to a place where we can be still, right? Be still and know that I am God. We need to quiet our souls, wait before the Lord, open the Bible, and I trust he's going to speak to us. You know, I found the Holy Spirit will, you know, just as a, as a young Christian, you know, the Holy Spirit might give a part of a verse, maybe a word, and so you find that verse. And then after you read that verse, and then the Holy Spirit will give another verse, and you just, you go zip, 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 and, and the Lord will give you just a whole uh, message, a word of encouragement, you know, just leading you through his word. It's the Holy Spirit. God has encouragement for us. That's why I say over and over, folks, going to church, reading the Bible, and praying is not religion. It's not being a good little Christian, boy or girl. It's giving opportunity for God to speak to you. 
Jesus already told us, in this life you will have trouble. So put on the brakes, <laughs> quiet your soul, and allow God to speak to you. Amen? Praise the Lord. He has, you know, it's um, uh, God's word never returns void. It will minister to you. God knows where you're at, and he wants to speak to you. So Paul has a very personal word of encouragement and a sure word that he's going to stand in Rome and give testimony of the Lord Jesus. And um, so is God's, uh, is God's will always without difficulties? Is God's, is God's will always easy sailing? <laughs> no. <laughs> a lot of times it's not. And at times, uh, we can begin to doubt God's plan. We can begin to doubt God's word to us. Satan tries to get us to quit, to turn our back. Uh, to, and, but hang on to the word, amen? Hang on to the word. Jesus is faithful, and he will bring his word to pass. He will. He will. You know, and there's a big difference between a hope so and a no so. When the Lord gives you a word and you're like, you know that this is a word from God, folks, write it down. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> you know, the older I get, I should, I'll just use me as an example, the more that I sympathize with the Israelites, you know, we forget, don't we? Write it down. Don't forget. God doesn't forget. And, and, and we need to hang on to his word. Praise the Lord he gives to us. So from being prisoned in the Roman barracks, Paul is transported by night under guard to Caesarea to prevent his assassination by religious nuts. And uh, we have them today. They were back then. And uh, in Caesarea, though, he gets the opportunity to testify before Felix, the governor, but is kept in prison there for two years. And remember, he's totally innocent. And, but actually, this was God's grace towards Felix. If we were to read uh, chapter 24, verse 22, Paul mentions that, Felix, you know, you know about Jesus. You know the truth. And then, um, and, but God gave Paul two years to preach to Felix. And the Bible says this. Let's see. Uh, now as he, Paul, spoke, okay, he's speaking to Felix. Now as he spoke about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became afraid and replied, leave for now, but when I have a, an opportunity, I'll call for you. At the same time, he was also hoping that Paul would offer him money, so he sent for him quite often and conversed with him. And so... Felix was convicted by what Paul had to talk about. He was hearing the truth. He was hearing the truth. Did Felix ever uh, receive Jesus? Well, we'll find out when we get to heaven. Because we see that his heart for wanting to talk with Paul was really, hey, I hope that he'll offer me some money to let him go. He knew Paul was innocent. But did Paul ever give in and give him money? <laughs> no, he stayed imprisoned. He preached the truth. And uh, we need to always, always do what's right. Amen? Stand, stand for what is right. Um, my, uh, my sister Grace, uh, she was uh, working in a particular store and uh, as a, a pharmacist, no, as a, a, a pharmacy tech. And... Uh, uh, this happened last year on, on you know, they're, they're celebrating a particular month to be uh, gay pride, and uh, my birthday's on that month. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so um, uh, the, uh, the lady who was over the pharmacy, she, she just had it in her head that she wants everybody to, to wear these, these gay pride pins. And Grace like, I can't do that. I'm not doing it. And so she started getting heat from her, heat from other employees. Uh, there, there was a, uh, um, a homosexual man that works in the pharmacy, and she has a great relationship with him. And, but then that started causing trouble because she wouldn't wear, you know, wear the pin. And she's like, if you guys want to celebrate that, that's fine, but I'm not going to wear the pin. And so she didn't lose her job, and I'm glad she stood up for what was right. Well, our daughter Olivia, uh, she um, uh, uh, got a memo that 
uh, you know, this month we're going to celebrate, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, how'd that go? Disabled, disabled pride month. Yeah, disabled pride. And so, so uh, but they didn't make her wear a pin or do anything like that. And so, uh, but the, the point I, I bring this up, and it wasn't in my notes, is that we need to, we need to stand by our convictions, amen? We, we, can't, we can't give in uh, whether it's going to benefit us financially or not. And so um, the Bible says that uh, Felix was convicted, but his motives for, for calling Paul wasn't pure. So we'll, we'll see when we get to heaven whether he's there or not. Porcius Festus succeeds Felix, and again, Paul is put on trial. At this time, Paul gets to witness about Jesus before Festus and King Agrippa and his wife Bernice. And um, one thing I want to know is I, I saw that the Gentile authorities, whether Roman soldiers, governors, or kings, all treated Paul with respect. They all treated him with respect. And uh, I never really thought about that before, but um, I was reading a verse, and, and then I felt the Holy Spirit want me to preach on this tonight, and, and just reading through, and I, and I saw, why did they treat Paul with respect? These are unbelievers. These are rough Roman soldiers, and uh, this is what I believe. I can only ma imagine Paul as being very polite. He was kind. He was gentle. He was a loving person. He wasn't a raving nut. You know, folks, a lot of times, I'm sorry, a lot of Christians bring grief on themselves because the way they behave, the way the, they come across as nuts, you know, <laughs> ravenous nuts. And they think, you know, I'm making a stand for Jesus. Well, yeah, you're making a stand for Jesus, but everyone thinks you're a nut by the way you're going about it. And, uh, and so Paul, he was treated with respect by unbelievers. He was a nice guy, someone you would enjoy being around. Like Jesus, Paul never held back the truth but it was spoken out of love and for the benefit of the people who listen. Instead of, you know, you know, instead of using the Bible as a sword to, to cut people, you know, um, he was, you know, uh, uh, being an example of Christ and people wanted to hear the truth. They wanted to hear the truth. He was, he was speaking for the benefit of those uh, who were listening. And in our ever-increasing anti-Christian culture, we need to do the same. Paul said, follow my example as I follow Christ. Let's see if I put that in. Nope, I didn't. Okay, so, um, but 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. It does the testimony to a lost people no good for the Christian to be snarky, rude, disrespectful, unkind, or threatening. You know, we need to always be polite, respectful, and kind. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, you know, if Jesus was nasty, people wouldn't want to be around him. But he, they, they felt loved, and he spoke the truth to them in love. But he, he, they knew that they were loved. They were loved. So we need to speak the truth in love for the benefit of those wh whom, whom we're speaking with. Ephesians 4.15 even with those who are at odds with us, we need to speak the truth in love for their benefit. And so Festus then sentenced Paul, sentences Paul to Rome, and, and look at the treatment by the Roman centurion who now is in charge of Paul to bring him to Rome. Okay, this is chapter 27, verse 1 and following. Verse 3. When it was decided that we were to sail to Italy, they handed over Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion named Julius of the Imperial Regiment. When we had boarded a ship of, let's see, uh, Ad Adramintin, <laughs> say that five times as fast as you can, uh, we put to sea, intending to sail to ports along the coast of Asia, uh, Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica was with us, and he says, the next day we put in uh, Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly 
and allowed him to go to his friends to receive their care. So why did Julius do that with Paul? You know, um, and the Bible mentions this centurion by name. I believe he became friends with Paul. I believe, you know, maybe Paul even had led him to Christ by then. But here this, this you know, if you're going to be a centurion, he went through battles. This is a tough guy. This isn't some wimpy political job. You know, he was, he was a soldier, and he's treating Paul kindly. And, uh, and in fact, we find out later that uh, the centurion even uh, ends up uh, saving Paul's life. Verse 42, the soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners so that no one could swim away and escape, but the centurion kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. And so he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. Isn't that awesome? So Paul had a wonderful testimony. He had the character of Christ. And, uh, and that's something we, we need to always have. Uh, so Paul was sentenced to Rome, but his trip was far from a cruise ship voyage. Maybe some people have gone on the carnival cruises lately and, or whatever have gotten sick or they start on fire. I don't want to go on a cruise ship. I don't know about you. I like being on land. And, uh, but Paul's trip was, was not, uh, you know, the love boat. But uh, the ship is caught in a storm for two weeks. Two weeks in a hurricane. Wow. Boy, I hope they got their money back on that one. <laughs> all, all their luggage thrown overboard. <laughs> bad, bad enough, you know. It's like so much for uh, the buffet and, <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the games. <laughs> you know, this, this cruise ship is gone. <laughs> oh, it's gone really bad. And all, now all your luggage is... <laughs> oh... My wife's probably saying under her breath, Brett, get it together. Oh. <laughs> a merry heart does good like a medicine. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe I just need a good laugh. I, I know I did. Anyway, so... <laughs> Dinner is scratched. <laughs> Luggage is thrown overboard. <laughs> and the ship. <laughs> oh, the ship crashes. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> oh, boy. We've been doing a lot of work painting over there and <clears throat> been on my hands and knees for two days. Uh, I know I'm the only one in the church that can do that trip. <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's good for me to laugh. So anyway, so then, then they got to swim the shore. <laughs> All the lifeboats are gone. And then, uh, <laughs> I am sorry. Uh, so then Paul, he gets to shore, and being the loving Christ-like man he is, he's wanting to help the people who are not wet, they're cold. He's going to help build a fire, and he gathers he gathers wood, and a poisonous snake comes out and bites him. Wow. And so, uh, was Jesus' word to Paul ever fulfilled? Yes, after spending three months on this island. And by the way, while there, Paul got to minister to the residents. And even the, the, the father of the leading man of the island, he was healed through Paul and, uh, and Paul did get to Rome, and he got to testify about Jesus before Caesar and his court. But was Paul ever discouraged? Did he ever doubt the word 
that Jesus told him when he appeared to him. What do you think? Did he ever doubt? Well, I believe he did, because on the ship during the storm, what did God do? He sent an angel to renew Paul's hope. And uh, this is uh, Acts 27, verse 23. <clears throat> For last night, an angel of God I belong to and serve stood by me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul. It is necessary for you to appear before a Caesar. And indeed, God has gracious, graciously given you all those who are sailing with you. Paul needed an encouragement. God knew that Paul needed an encouragement. Folks, <laughs> I would have needed it when dinner was gone, <laughs> you know. And uh, Paul, I would have needed it a lot, lot sooner, but God knew that Paul was at a low. He wasn't thinking anymore about Jesus coming to him, being close to him, calling him by name, lovingly encouraging him. And, you know, the Lord will do that for us too. He knows when we need the encouragement, and he has encouragement for you. you know, the Bible says this in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Praise the Lord. He is with you, and he's with me wherever we go. Wherever we go, whatever we go through. And, and the Lord is near. This is, this is good, what, Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near, who all who call, uh, near to all who call on him, to all who call, up, uh, call on him in truth. Praise the Lord. God is near you. God is near you. The Bible says this, and Paul says this in Philippians 4 and verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He's not far away. He's near. He said he'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. And how many know that God's holy angels are also with you? He's, they're also with you. Uh, this, this is great. 2 Kings uh, chapter 6 and verse 16. The prophet Elijah and his servant, they're at their house. And, and the, uh, the army has come to, to capture them. And the servant is afraid. And the prophet says this. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And look what happens. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. How many know the Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him? As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. You know, as, as people, we are, we are prone to, to uh, being dis, uh, disturbed by what we see or what might happen. Um, we get shaken by our feelings. Well, I don't feel God, so I guess he's not with me any longer. And that's where the faith the Lord is wanting to refine in us is that we can trust him. He is near. He is near. You know, Jesus, Jesus was always near Paul when he was in prison, but he allowed Paul to see him, that he's there. The Lord is near, the Bible says. And, and, and the Bible says that, uh, uh, that he gives his angels charge concerning us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 that, uh, that their ministering spirits sent to, to uh, uh, serve those who will inherit salvation. That's us. It's us. And uh, Romans chapter 1, uh, God sends his angels for us. So wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you face, Jesus is near. He's near. So are the Lord's holy angels. At times, God allows us to feel his presence, to feel his angels. Praise the Lord. And at times, people have been blessed to see Jesus or to see angels with their eyes. But God wants you to be assured he's always with you. You can trust him. You're never alone. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? In a, in a crazy world, in countless possibilities of things can happen, 
But you know what? We need to know God loves me. He's with me. He's with me. He's with you. <clears throat> so Paul went through great difficulties and a good amount of and and a good amount of time had passed since Jesus spoke to him, but and and God God knew he needed encouragement. But you know what I notice about Paul? Paul's actions in the meantime of him, you know, originally being beat up by a mob, that would be scary. A mob of 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 religious crazies, you know, attacking. I mean, that that's just nuts. And uh all the, all the way through being shipwrecked, you know what? He remained faithful to his commitment to Christ. How many people, when the tough get going, well, let's see, let's see. When the going gets tough, they get going, <laughs> right? They take off. And uh, Paul remained faithful to his commitment to Christ. Secondly, he continued to be Christ-like in his attitudes and behaviors. You know, he, I hear Christians, you know, in the name, you know, rebuking people in the name of Jesus and this and that and the other. And it's like, well, we, in the Bible, we see Paul, you know, rebuked a demon that was in a girl and cast it out. But, you know, we see people being like Jesus. You know, we love people, right? We, we hate sin, but we love people. We, we hate the devil, <laughs> you know, we can, we can do, you know, there's, Anyway, I, I won't rabbit trail on that. But he conti Paul continued to be Christ-like in his attitudes and behaviors, even when he was discouraged. Even when, you know, dinner was canceled, <laughs> his luggage was all thrown overboard, the ship crashed, and they, he, they swim to shore. Can you imagine? They, they didn't eat for two weeks, and then right before the ship went down, Paul was like, God says, eat something. And so they took courage and they ate. But then, you know, they, they swam to shore. And what does Paul do? He's not thinking of himself. He's saying, oh, woe's me. He's thinking of others. He's going to serve others. I'm going to go gather wood and, and to help people out. Christ-like. And three, he made the most of every opportunity to share Jesus with others. Isn't that awesome? Whether he was beaten Okay, he gets beat up, he, he, he tells people about Jesus. He gets imprisoned, he tells people about Jesus. He gets shipwrecked, he tells people about Jesus. How many of us say, okay, I earned, uh, I, I earned time to, for myself. I earned time to bellyache. I earned time to tend to my own needs. And I know these lost people are all around me, but you know, it's me time now. I've been shipwrecked. <laughs> I saw dessert be thrown overboard. You know, it's me time. No, Paul, Paul made the most of every opportunity. And you know, God tells us to do that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's in the New Testament. I don't have it written down. But the Bible says, making the most of every opportunity. And it's talking about telling others about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, help us to walk in faith in our Lord's faithfulness, and to be like Paul in every, every situation we may find ourselves in. Well, if I could have um, Jay and Beverly come on back up. Let's all stand. And I've asked them to, to lead us in that song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Praise the Lord. God loves you. He's for you and not against you. He always has good plans for you. The journey may be difficult, but the Lord is near. The Lord is near. And Chesley, if you want to help with that. Yeah. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before 
before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning no turning back. Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. We've made a commitment to you. Lord, we're going to follow you through thick or thin. And Lord, we're going to trust you that Lord, even when things look scary, we're going to trust that you're with us. You said that you're near. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, as the angels were surrounding Elisha and his servant, Lord, so your angels are surrounding us. Lord, we're safe. It's okay. We're gonna be all right. We might get beat up. We might lose dinner. We might be imprisoned. We might need to swim to shore. We might get bitten by a snake. But Lord God, you're with us. You're with us. You care about us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Are you discouraged this evening? God loves you. God loves you. Oh, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, encourage your people, comfort your people, strengthen your people, lift them up. Oh, Heavenly Father, give your people ears to hear your voice. Oh, God, you are the God of hope and the God of encouragement. God, you have encouragement for your people. Oh, folks, if you've been too busy for Jesus, you've been not allowing God to encourage you. Don't read the Bible as, as a duty. Read it to get close to the Lord. Read it to hear from heaven, to hear. God knows what you're going through. He cares. He loves you. He loves you. You're precious. You're dear to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray that, God, that you'd give us grace. Give us grace to be like Paul. Lord, to be like you. God, to think of others. Lord, to, to, be, to behave in a loving, gentle, kind manner. Lord, no matter what's going on in the world, God, the wickedness, the, 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 Lord, the, even the attacks against Christians, Lord, to be gentle, to be kind, to be thinking of others, to make the most of every opportunity to tell others, God, about your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, Lord, thank you, God. You know, I heard a wonderful testimony today over lunch, and about this lady who was so lost, so lost, and how Jesus reached down and he saved her. He, he brought her out of a, a, a homosexual lifestyle and it wasn't condemnation, it was setting her free. It was setting her free and she's full of joy and peace. Lord, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you're saving people today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. If you are discouraged tonight, and, and uh, I want to just give opportunity to find a place of prayer, maybe, you know, you feel the Lord drawing you to, to, to come near and kneel at the altar, or just sit back down where you're at, and, and just God loves you. He wants to encourage you, and uh, maybe, Beverly, you want to pick a song, maybe one that you already sang tonight or whatever, and let's just Let's just give God opportunity to encourage you personally. Maybe the Holy Spirit will speak a verse, a scripture verse. You are a part of a verse, and you need to turn, sit down and turn to that. But allow the Lord to encourage you. He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're at. He knows your heart, your thoughts. He's with you. He is near. He is not far away. He is here right now. Let's just praise the 
And don't feel you need to sing. You just allow the Lord to encourage you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Oh, let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Oh, let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise you, Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Right, Thank you, singing. Father. Amen. Oh, let's just praise. God loves you so much. Lord. You are so precious and dear to Him. Praise oh, the Lord. Let's just lift our hands you, toward Jesus. heaven and praise. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord cares for you. He loves you. He loves you. You're not alone. He hasn't forgotten you. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're facing. Peace be still. Peace be still. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just cast cast every anxiety upon Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, God. You know. You understand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as Jay continues to play on the keyboard, and, and maybe you feel you just need to, you, you need to tell a brother or sister what you're going through and you desire to be prayed for, maybe you just want to turn to the person next year, or you want to, you know, I'm available here, and, and I'll, I'm just going to step down and off the platform, and, and if, you, if you need to come, you need to, to share, and, and I'd love to pray for you, and I know everyone present, you know, if you want to just turn to someone, and you'd rather tell someone next to you, I know they would, they would pray with you too. So just continue to pray, uh, play for a little bit, Jay, and I'll, I'll just step down and make myself available.
just keep playing, Jay. And, you know, um, I feel like some might need to uh, continue to, to just wait before the Lord. And, you know, we're, we're in a, too big of a hurry a lot of times. And, and God's wanting to minister to us. He's wanting to encourage us personally. And uh, so if you, if you feel like service is... You know you're you're done. I mean you can you can leave but quietly with no talking. But um, otherwise, you know let's just continue to make this a a place of prayer. Allow it to be a place of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You are, you're not alone. Like Hilton Griswold used to say, I love the ship and every fellow in the ship. <laughs> We're brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, life gets difficult. It gets hard. But uh, God's put us in a family. And so we need to stay close. Amen. And pray for one another. And, and, and take time with Jesus. Always take time with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to uh, pray a prayer dismissal, and if, if Jay, you'll keep playing there, and uh, and and if if you feel like you still need to to pray, I, I don't want to interrupt that, and so we'll just leave quietly then. And God, we just thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight. Lord, thank you for the time we had in worshiping you and being in prayer, Lord, for uh, being encouraged in your Word, Lord. God, um, we just thank you, Lord, that you are a, an awesome God, and we're going to see you face to face one day, Lord, and it's just going to be so good, Lord. All the trials and all the difficulties of earth, Lord, will understand, and it's going to be okay, Lord, when we see you face to face. Thank you, Lord. Seal this word in our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us grace, God, throughout the rest of this week to spend time with you, Lord, to be still and know that you are God. Lord, to be reminded that you're with us. Your angels are with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Amen.